Good afternoon. I got a song here that I'm working on. This is one of those songs where the producer sent me a bunch of uh, scratch guitars and the parts are awesome. He's got really great ideas. He just wants it executed better and with better tone. So this song is pop and rock. It is not country at all. And so I'm going to play some of these soloed guitar tracks. I say soloed, but it's really I've just isolated them. I'm going to play like three of his together. And then I'm going to stack those up um, with the sound that I think it should have, you know. And since it's a lot more modern and rock, I'm using my Black Star. I'm on the highest gain setting, and it sounds like this. And that's going through my Morgan Cat in the garage. And since that's a 65 watt speaker, I'm in 10 watt mode, like I explained in in the the video. <laughs> So, here, here are his, his parts. Check this out. Two, three, four. So you can hear there's two low guitars and one high guitar, and they're doing this. We're in B flat. Now, my brain works in numbers, partially because I have two math degrees. I uh, hated myself in college and suffered through. <laughs> Actually, it was cool. I really like math. Anyway, also because I work in the natural number system. So for me, um, I'm in a key of B flat. And then these notes are flat seven, six, five, four, five, six, one. That's the flat seven, right? I could also play it here. I like having the slightly brighter one. <laughs> oh man, it's been it's been fun having a high gain amp. Like they're used a lot more in Nashville than you think. You listen to Hardy Records, Morgan Wallen, um, anything that's hard rock, like a lot of players are not just cranking their vintage basements these days, you know, which is kind of what I've been resorting to um, on those sessions. I played on some really heavy stuff for like Dylan Marlowe, and I played on a couple of Hardy's older songs. Um, I'm on Tyler Chambers stuff, which is pretty heavy. There's a guy named Dawson Anderson we just cut a bunch of stuff for, and that was that was pretty low slung, heavy, you know, like baritone with humbuckers um, into a into a cranked amp kind of thing. So I'm excited. I'm excited to put that thing in my cartridge rig and go and deliver slightly more authentic, like a little more reminiscent of like Zach Wild, to be honest, you know, and. That's not necessarily my thing, but I'm a session guy. My thing is to do the right thing for the song. So if the right thing is having this like semi squealy, really punchy high gain rhythm sound that I can play single note lines with and be a little more reminiscent of the LA tones from uh, days <laughs> in the past, you know, then that's my job and that's what I'm going to do. I forgot the riff. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Okay, he's hanging it out a little bit longer than that. And I need to not slide down because it sounds like I'm trying to end on a flat seven. Okay. So there went, there went one of his. Now I'm going to record enable another one for me. Cool. And now the, uh, the high guy. Now there's only three on this riff, but then, but then this riff becomes a part later on in the song and there's actually four guitars stacking it up. And 
three of them play the entire turn around, and one of them jumps on the back half of the turn. So here comes the high part. With the high guy. I've got to decide how long I'm letting these last. Let me listen to his one more time. Just be real, real picky about what's happening here. This is, this is my job, zeroing in on the minutia, right? Okay. That's it. And then there was a, there was a noticeable. Yeah, I could do that. And then his high guy, though, his high guy slides off. It's a real. Mm-hmm. Aha. Okay. So let's let's mute his guitars, and I'm gonna go through and retrack all three of mine. So here's the first one. There we go. That's with the stop. Second guy, I'll pan these a little bit. Cool, and the high one, I'll try the same thing, sliding off a little later than the other lower ones stop. I'm sliding early, one more. That just seems late. That just seems like it's hanging way out in the open. Yeah, that, that just seems so much tighter and better. So check out the riff. This is the riff, all right? So the last part, it's a uh, two, three, four. And it's off for the next downbeat. The downbeat would be the three. So the way, again, math brain, Nashville number system brain. This is this is the way I think of this. One 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 five six flat seven four three one one five six flat seven. That that's just you know numerically. That's how I think of it. So let's start doubling those. Here it goes. Okay, so close. I, I, it took me a second to settle into it. My first bar was a little pockety, a little funky. Okay, here comes uh, guy number two. Okay, that was, some stuff started to throw me off there. I'm gonna turn the click volume up. And uh, I wonder how much of his, like his, it, it is, there are so many chops. It's not one performance. It's notes kind of moved and placed where he wants. And so there's some weird resonances happening that are kind of throwing me off. So um, I've got the riff figured out. I've got the feel and everything. So let's redo my second track with his 
guitars out. <laughs> Oh, just late on the downbeat. Just to be ultra picky, I'm going to replay my first one as well now that I'm now that I'm not hearing any of those resonant things. Let's hear what his high guy's doing. He might be playing the whole riff. Okay, I'll replay that high guy, but then here's a fourth track that comes in halfway through that riff. So it's kind of like a, it's something like that. Let, let's leave that out of what we're doing right now so far. Let me get this high guy tightened up with, with my other two tracks. One more, just because I recorded over one of my low guys, <laughs> and uh, my muting wasn't super consistent. Sweet. All right, let's see here. Okay, same thing. Here we go. Yeah, let's get the timing. Am I muting early again? I am. Why do I want it to be so quickly cut off? There it is. It's close enough to the other riff, but different enough that it takes a second to get it under your fingers. All right, now for the high one. He just copied and pasted, but I'm not going to do that. I'm being paid to do this. And now, the layers of riffs. Here we go. That one, that one um, is different. It ends in a different spot. The other one was. That's where it ended. This one is. It's cool. All right, here we go. Cool. Now I'm just going to mute all of his because, uh, again, there's those weird resonant things and, and the way it's played is kind of throwing me off just a hair. And I may go back and redo this one that I tracked to him. Mm -hmm. 
tell that first one was off a little bit. Here we go, going back to redo it. And now the high guy. Rock and roll. Those are the only spots that those things occur. So now what I want to move to are two rock rhythm passes that uh, in the comments on Pro Tools, you know, like next to your next to all your I.O. settings and your track, like where you actually push record on the track, where you can mute it and solo it, all your track controls on the left side, there's an option to show comments. And in the comments, the producer said, maybe this is a baritone. So I think he wants this real low rock and roll thing. Check, check these passes out. First, I'm gonna mute what I have open of mine. We will listen to this and then I think I'll grab a baritone. That's funny. It's the same part I just got done copying on different tracks and it's on another track. So he's not using a baritone. I could get the real, real low. I could go an octave down from here with a berry. Maybe we do do that. But let's, let's track these parts that are the same as what I just got done doing on his other tracks. Sometimes that just, that just happens. Like people, people get ideas and they're like, oh, I'll put this on a different track, probably because something else was happening on this track at the same time. So we had to move that part over. That's right. I will pick it up there on the next track. So, does that part play? Yes, it does. It comes in on the next verse. And then that, that's a pre-chorus part. So, let's just see here. Cool. So the way that I'm going to attack this song is I'm just going to copy his tracks. That's what I feel like he wants the most is he would tell you he's a frustrated guitar player, right? But he's a really great musician and has great ideas. And so I'm just here to execute those. And that's fine. I know that going in. And then I always, at the end, throw a couple things on across the whole song, like, I think this is cool. Here's some of my vibe, you know? And so it's the combination of those things, um, doing exactly what he wants, and then uh, adding some of my own instincts after the fact. So I'm gonna grab a baritone. All right, I'm back with my berry. And uh, again, we're in B flat. Baritone standard tuning is a B, right? A low B. Well, I'm a half step down. So where in a normal guitar, you go from E standard to E flat standard. In a baritone, I was in B standard. Now I'm in B flat standard. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. Let's go back to what we are um, copying in this track. 
I'm gonna play along with this chorus before recording it. So that's the trick for me. Um, since he's not playing a baritone in those parts, he's got to go. His his chord is hitting up here. For me, it's. Sounds better if I if I play everything fretted instead of open. Okay, so here we go. Let's try this yet again. to build one more time because I'm picky. Oh yes, I love it. All right, now I'm muting his guitars and I'm gonna double. Um, this this actually this double starts on the on the pre-chorus. <laughs> Cool. I really like it. Okay, now I'm hopping to the next chorus and doing the same thing. And let's just have one of his guitars in there so I make sure that he didn't do something slightly different. It looks like he just copied and pasted, but we will see. This actually goes through the turn, so at the end of the chorus... So I'm adding that onto the end. Here we go. time on that last part. Uh, it doesn't sound good.
Oh, I'm an eighth. I'm a sixteenth note late. That's the thing. He's doing one E and a two E and a one E. One E and a two E and a one E. Right. So he hits that ninth low note. Again, you gotta just really pay attention. Use your ears. Let's catch this entire thing from the pre-chorus on my double. I'm going to mute his guitars. Yes, I like that a lot. Man, that uh, that low one chord just hits different after the riff, you know? Because you're expecting it to be... And it's... So filthy. Uh, let's hear it panned out. That's awesome. Okay, we've got um, another another part here. Uh, really, it's the same thing. There's a third chorus, so I want to see what these tracks are doing in the bridge. Interesting. So he put he he cut out to mute there. So it goes. Here we go. And I'm just letting it ring for as long. Like, like he had it ringing. And then he pasted that to the next bar, used Pro Tools to reverse it and do a little bit of a swell. And it kind of goes... You know, that kind of effect. So I'm going to track it for him to do that with if, if he so desires. Next guy, the double. Rock and roll. So it sounds like the front half of the course chorus is down and you know that's the bar four move of the chorus right so it's um so front half of the chorus is down back half is up we use that lick that riff to get into the up section so it's the same thing as the last chorus with the with the octave single note octave mute move but um there's a tag on the the five chord and four chord in the middle of the chorus. Here we go.
Ah, it went too far. I'm just going to chop it off because it, it is a hard cut off mute ending that, that makes more sense if the production does it. So uh, there's one thing in here I want to... One more time from there out. Super cool. I think I'm good to just double. Okay, here we go. That makes a lot more sense. Let's do that. I just cleaned up that middle bar right before it tags. And then the outro, I felt like my second guy, there was just a little bit pockety, so let's grab that as well. Ooh. falling apart. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to let y'all go here. Uh, I've got the parts that he wanted copied, copied, and I'm going to add a bunch of stuff and turn this in. So I will see you all later. Have a good one.